So welcome everyone uh, to the day two of uh, inaugural Danny ML Asia Technical Forum. Uh, I'm Sakya Dasgupta, CEO and founder of Edge Cortex, and I'll be chairing today's session. Uh, it's a great pleasure to talking to all of you from Tokyo here. Uh, okay, so uh, switching on to the video posters, the first one is uh, from Samir Hdadat. He's the head of product and technical marketing at ETA Compute, and he's talking about enabling embedded vision for all with ultra low power image classification. Hello, and welcome to this short overview of embedded vision for ultra low power image classification. My name is Semir Haddad, and I am the head of product and technical marketing for Eta Compute, an AI company. The electronic world offers a diversity of vision sensors, from the latest 120 million pixel CMOS sensors to the simplest sensors able to monitor only one pixel. With artificial intelligence at the edge, it is now possible to take advantage of this, this diversity and implement meaningful embedded vision applications, even with the simplest sensors. The most common problem to solve with embedded vision is image classification, recognizing what is on an image. Image classification is used to detect and count objects, people, animals, events. Image classification is a supervised learning problem, which means we provide labeled image and labeled examples to train the model. Most image classification algorithms use a convolutional neural network as an architecture, or CNN. A CNN extracts each feature through layers and from the finer to the coarser features to finally identify the object. If you want to know more, there is lots of literature about CNN, including a Wikipedia page. Developing a vision algorithm for the edge is a balancing act. You need to find an image classifier model that will provide good accuracy, but is light enough to fit in your hardware. For instance, ResNet 50 has great accuracy, but requires 23 million parameters. A more optimized model may be MobileNet V1, V2, V3, or TinyYolo. There is no shortage of options. This figure illustrates the process in developing an embedded vision application at the edge. First, you need a data set that is related to your use case. It may be an existing one or you may to have to create one. Then you need to choose a neural network architecture. Again, it can be an existing one or you have to create your own model. And then you need to choose your target hardware. Again, you have to decide if you want to use existing modules and boards or if you want to develop your own board. You then enter the design cycles where you need to deploy and test your network in real life and then retrain, recontize, revalidate your network and so on. For most developers, it's better if you can get help for the green boxes that I'm showing on this slide. And at Data Compute, we provide this help. Our TensorFlow software makes it easy to collect data and we provide optimized neural network for dedicated use cases. Our Tensai boards can be used for fast prototyping and they use our ultra low power processor. And our Tensai compiler optimizes the trained neural network to test on the hardware seamlessly. With our neural network, our compiler, our ultra low power processors, we are able to implement embedded vision algorithms with very low power. For instance, image classification with CIFAR 10 takes only 0.14 millijoule per inference for 20 inferences per second. Person detection is 1.2 millijoule per inference for 2.5 inferences per second. And person and object counting is, can be done with 4.1 millijoule per inference and one inference per second. I am showing here some real life examples. On the left, we count people outdoor. So we count five people and there are indeed five people sitting. On the right side, I'm, there is one person in the room 
we are counting one person and there is one person that is going to enter the room so soon the count will be two now it's almost there the count is two yes there are two people in the room if you want to know more contact me at semir at etacompute.com I also invite you to visit our website and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Thank you. Okay, so there's a question here. Um, are there any particular use cases when ETA compute is much better than conventional digital architectures? Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what you mean by uh, conventional digital architecture. Um, what uh, uh, we are, in fact, we are very extremely good at uh, low power processing. So um, uh, that's why, in fact, what we uh, uh, we advertise is not uh, the teraops that we deliver, but it's really the millijoule per inference. So, and that's the, that's the, the way uh, our customers, um, uh, that's the, 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 what our customers expect. So I would say, uh, we are uh, much better than commercial architecture in terms of very efficient uh, artificial intelligence in millijoules. That's really what differentiates us. Okay. Uh, so in this case, uh, by digital architectures, uh, the question, you know, they mean traditional clock-based chips. Um, so... Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, right. You're right. In fact, so I can elaborate a little on that. And uh, it looks like your your uh, uh, the, the person knows about us. Yes, we have an architecture that is uh, kind of uh, uh, unique in the fact that we have um, what we call continuous voltage and frequency scaling in our architecture, which means that we can uh, fine tune. You can we can really uh, fine tune the frequency of our processor that are partly asynchronous. Uh, fine tune the, the frequency uh, and, and adjust the frequency versus the voltage. So, and, and that way we can run at very low voltage, almost uh, sub threshold, and save a lot of power compared to uh, generic, uh, I would say, just synchronous architecture. Excellent. Uh, and in the previous uh, you know, session, uh, so uh, talk, we've saw a lot about pruning and sparsity. Um, how does ETA deal with data sparsity? Uh, and, and if there are uh, less sparse versus more sparse use cases, if you can comment on that. Yeah, I can comment on that. Um, so the, the, the way really we achieve uh, outstanding uh, power efficiency is with this uh, continuous voltage and frequency scaling and the, the our architecture, which is a multi-core architecture with uh, a mix of DSP and CPU. Uh, beside that, in fact, we don't have any specific acceleration for neural network. So our acceleration is really our DSP uh, and uh, our efficiency comes from our uh, continuous voltage and frequency scaling. So in fact, we can, uh, we are very flexible and uh, sparsity on our, on our, uh, in our solution will be uh, managed at uh, the software level with our uh, software compiler. So we have a compiler that takes a neural network and optimizes it for our hardware. So everything that we can do in terms of optimization for sparsity or redundancy elimination of memory optimization will be done at the compiler level. Got it. Thanks, Amir. I would like to thank our sponsors once again, without whom uh, the Tiny ML Asia Forum would not be possible and uh, be available for free of charge. Uh, starting with ARM, our premier sponsor, the Software and Hardware Foundation for TinyML. Edge Cortex, their dynamic neural accelerator brings near cloud performance to the edge devices. Finally, SynSense. SynSense builds ultra low power sensing and inference hardware for embedded mobile and edge devices. Thanks a lot once again to all our sponsors. I would also like to thank our partners, uh, conference partner SHAI, as well as all our media partners.
So that brings us to the end of today's session. Uh, and I look forward to seeing all of you once again tomorrow for the day three of TinyML Asia. Thank you, everyone. Thanks all our speakers and all our sponsors once again. Thank you.